Rafa Delgado, Ian Margol was down in Florida City waiting to be allowed in by the authorities down into the Keys, and they have started that journey. Ian, you with us? Eric, hey, we are the first media vehicle allowed in this morning. So what they've decided to do was they wanted media to go in a few minutes early, basically to prevent the media crush, uh, cameras blocking cars, things like that. And then immediately after media, that's when the residents and business owners here in the Upper Keys were allowed to begin, are allowed to begin moving in. Now take a look at this. I'm going to flip the camera around. The only people that were sent in front of us this morning were people that were law enforcement or people that were allowed to, uh, that were there to physically clear the road. So just a very specific set of people. But starting early yesterday morning, we had that roadblock going on. And people have been there since late last night. In fact, the first man that was in line, he was saying to me that he got there at one in the afternoon yesterday and he just had a hunch that he was supposed to move over and get in line. He lined up and everybody lined up behind him. So there were, I mean, absolutely hundreds of people that were out there this morning waiting to get in. Tempers were definitely boiling over a little bit. Uh, people were just getting anxious to get home. Many of them worried about what they would find once they got there. Uh, but right now what they're doing, Florida Highway Patrol is out there, Miami-Dade Police uh, Department, they are out there, Monroe County Sh Sheriff's, they are out there, just sort of trying to keep everyone organized. And one of the complaints that some of the people that were out there had, they said there was a little bit of a lack of communication uh, from police while they were out there. But honestly, uh, they were doing the best they can. They are still doing the best they can just to try to keep everybody calm. But I think that there wasn't as much information as many of these residents uh, would like. And so this morning, many of them just hoping to get home. The man that I spoke with that was first in line, I'll give you guys back a, a view out front here. Uh, the man I was speaking with who was front in line, it was the first in line, was basically saying, look, I have, I live in Key Largo. I have friends that were still there. They tell me I have power. But, you know, he's like, I don't, he said they haven't, you know, they didn't get to go into my house. I don't know if I have water damage. I don't know if there are, you know, if there's a leak inside of my house. So there are all these things that are going through these these uh, residents minds these business owners minds uh this morning so if you are seeing this or hearing this this morning and you live in the keys you didn't maybe know what you need if you live in the upper keys key largo uh, isla Mirada, or tavernier if you live in the keys in the upper keys or you have a business there if you go to that us1 uh that us1 entrance there where that blockade has been if you have proof of residence proof that you own a business or the yellow re-entry sticker, that will be the way that you can get back in this morning. And what we're seeing so far on the road, at least in this beginning part of US-1, as I, I sort of look out over my my, uh, my camera here, is the roads seem to, they've done a pretty good job of, of cleaning, clearing the roads, at least in this upper part, this 18 mile stretch here, uh, where that you would, where you start your, your trip toward the upper keys here. Um, JC, Eric, so far it looks like these actually fared pretty well. I'm sure that they cleared some debris and things out of the way uh, over the last couple of days. But in terms of structural damage on the road, I flip this around again. Uh, in terms of structural damage on the road, we're not really seeing any. In fact, the fence on either side here as well uh, looks mostly intact as well. I have any, there has been nothing that has really jumped out at me per se uh, to show that Irma caused too much damage at least in the beginning of this 18-mile uh, stretch. Well, the good news, the helpful part of that is the 18-mile stretch was completely rebuilt, redone. Those border walls set up. A lot of advancements made on that 18-mile stretch for those who are traveling in and out of the Keys just in the last few years. I remember when that was under construction, every time you would see the new the new roadway being built as you were headed down there. So uh, you have some safety mechanisms that have been put in place there. You should see Road's okay all the way down to about Sugarloaf Key. It's the debris that you're going to start to see when you right. get to Key Largo. I know you're um, continuing on, and we're so glad that we're getting this view. I want our viewers, those who have power and can watch us, we're also showing you Sky 10 aerial pictures of Key Largo, and this is what Ian is going to encounter when he gets there. The first thing he's going to see is, is Gilbert's. Uh, he's going to notice uh, the, the, the ruining of the area that so many people, as soon as they get through that stretch, they say, hey, I want a fish sandwich, I, I want a cocktail, I want to enjoy the Keys. Gilbert's, for the most part, is gone. And then Snappers, another institution down uh, a little further in Key Largo, uh, they've already said they're going to be re uh, rebuilding because there's nothing left. 
so many areas of the Keys, you've got homes, you've got boats, you've got buildings, you've got dry docks at the marinas. They're underwater, they're ruined, they've lost roofs, and um, there's the destruction that we see from above is what, Ian, you're going to see on the ground as soon as you enter uh, the, the, the populated areas of the Keys. And, and that's what we're expecting once we get further down. Obviously, we are just... We, I, I Skyped in with you guys. We began this, this shot here about a minute, two minutes into our drive. So we, this was the very, very early part uh, of this 18-mile stretch. So as soon as, yeah, as soon as we start getting into that, uh, that Sugarloaf area, we will start to, we're expecting to start to see some of, some of the issues here. But the Upper Keys, the only places that you can go right now, Tavernier, Isla Mirada, uh, uh, excuse me, what am I missing? Uh, Tavernier, uh, Key Largo, excuse me. So those are the beginning. That's the only one business owners and people who live here. And actually, we're starting to catch up, if we can clear the windshield one more time here, uh, we're starting to catch up to some of these crews. I don't know if you can see them. They're a little bit small to make out. Coming up over the bridge here, right in front of us, you can see these are the people that have been let in before us this morning. Uh, we're, but we believe they are all law enforcement or people uh, that are here specifically to help with the cleanup, JC and Eric. Ian Margol, you are riding down US-1, the overseas highway, along that 18-mile stretch before you get over the bridge and into Key Largo and into the Upper Keys, in which we will see from the ground the damage that we have seen from Sky 10 overhead. Ian, we're going to let you keep driving. As soon as you cross those bridges, as soon as you make that turn down onto the overseas highway and, and continue through the, the portions of Key Largo. Get back with us. We're going to bring you up live here, okay, because we want to take all of our viewers Absolutely. here in South Florida on the ride along.